if you're a content creator and you're looking for a mobile phone gimbal stabilizer so you can get smoother footage, then this company here, I've no idea how you pronounce that, could have exactly what you're looking for. Now they sent me the brand new black edition of the X Pro and I asked them to also send their next in the range so that we could do a comparison, see what the quality is like and see which one might be right for you. So let's take a look. So we're out in St Albans with the Smart X Pro and the Smart XE gimbal, just trying out how smooth the action is. So we're just looking at the stabilization on the gimbal and how smooth it's going. And as you can see, I'm being tracked from behind as well. So we're going to just demonstrate the tracking motion here. And in this example, we're going to do body tracking. So we're just going to select body and then I'm going to move around the gimbal and we can just see how the gimbal moves gently and will follow me. And you'll notice it just keep me quite central. So we're now going to use the tracking where the camera is moving around the subject. If you have pre-loved tech and you want to raise funds for your new gear, then head over to MPB and they'll give you cash for your kit. There's a link in the description below. This is the Smart XE and this is the Smart X Pro, the top of the range. They're very, very similar. The build qualities are very similar. The functionality is very similar. They work in the same way and the, the quality of use is almost identical. There are a few differences though. The X Pro has much longer battery power and it has a rechargeable, replaceable battery where the rechargeable battery on the XC is built in. Another difference is this has a LCD OLED screen that uh, has eight functions on the jog wheel, eight modes, whereas this only has four of the more popular ones, which arguably is certainly enough. On the X Pro, the fill light is on the back here, whereas with the XE, as a separate fill light that clips on the top, like so and actually you can clip them underneath as well uh, unless there's a magnet here you might not want it pointing up but you might want it to bounce off something or you want to magnet it to something else if you have one of these you could mount it on the x pro as well um, the only downside with the x pro is if you're in selfie mode, you wouldn't be able to use the light on the back. So having one of these, I think, is an advantage. These are also RGB, so it's a long press to turn it on. The warm light, red, blue, green, violet, teal, and back to daylight, which I think even to use as a little background highlighter or to do some mood lighting on a, a model or an object, I think could be really good fun and we'll be trying that out. But certainly the zoom functions and the focus wheel work in exactly the same way. The size form factor of this one is slightly larger, the handle slightly thicker, otherwise they're very similar products. You can attach a lanyard here, one quarter eighth thread to put your tripod mount or stand here. Just lift up to open it out. You'll notice a little hole here. This slots into when it's closed. At the back here is the door for the battery. That's magnetic. This can be replaced if you want spares on a job. On the side here, we have the USB-C charging. Mount your mobile phone, put your camera to the left. Make sure your test is horizontal. Slot your phone in. Just slide it till it balances horizontally. And then long press on the start button here. 
on the power button and it fires up. On the OLED LCD screen, we have the different modes. So at the moment, it launches in pan follow mode. The gimbal will stay horizontal. Double click on that to recenter it. And we can use this jog wheel to go into follow mode. So wherever I tilt this, it will look. Double click, go into recenter. Another click, we're into lock mode. So it will just lock it on the subject that you've selected. Another single click point of view. So wherever I point the camera, it will follow as if I'm looking at something. This will also show the indication for inception mode, the logo, wireless charging, Bluetooth, and any firmware updates. Do inception mode, you triple click. One, two, three. And see me had started recording. It will just slowly turn. Single click on here to record. And you could long press on this to switch to wireless charging for mobile phones. With the on off button, if you do a single click, it will turn the light on and this round. The fill light is built in here. And if we just press this once, you can see it comes on. Press it again, and we get three different levels of light. So the wheel on the side will be used as a focus pull. And this is the zoom function to zoom in and out. Of course, we can turn this upside down. Film in this direction. So you'll select the gimbal you're using. Start. Choose your gimbal. And you're filming directly through the camera. Home screen takes you back to choose which gimbal you're using. This selects different filters for the face, the beauty filters, the smoothing filters. This chooses your resolution, 720, 1080, and we do have 4K at 30 frames a second or 24 frames a second. I'll show you in a minute, but when we flip the camera around to selfie mode, we still do to get 4K. And this gives us all our camera settings and gimbal settings. So we can have the flash is the lights off, or we can have always on, so we can still use the camera light as well. And then we have camera settings. I've already set this to uh, mirror the selfie mode. So when you play it back, it will be as your eye has seen it and lock facial tracking, which I'll show you shortly. And if you are plugging in a microphone, you can set this to have the Bluetooth microphone there. Gimbal settings, you can check your firmware and you can look at your parameters. A little faster it's quite jerky so as you can see to make it a little more cinematic you can lower those and you can do the same with the tilt so we just bring those down as well so we get nice smooth cinematic movements when we're using it it has an anti-shake feature but interestingly we have expert feature here which in here we've got all the settings this gives you a full range of modification and it's quite a high standard, I would say, for these gimbal setups. So I was quite impressed with this. And you can flick between different lens lenses here, different zoom amounts, which is quite handy. And you do have adjustments here. If the gimbal horizontal line isn't 100% right, you can manually adjust it here by hand. You can just refine that. Going around to this side, you can use gestures to uh, turn on and off facial tracking. You have a palm gesture, gesture to do the countdown, to give you, a, for example, a three second countdown. Fist gesture, we switch from video to photo mode, but it will recommend different uh, moves you can do with your camera, which is quite inspiring. We'll use inception mode. So when we start recording, it'll automatically start. Inception function. We can do what they call the Hitchcock effect, because this creepy kind of effect. Panoramic photos, it's just processing that. Obviously we can use photo mode, video mode, and we can do a time lapse. 
This here is where you can obviously view any footage you've taken. And here we can do face and body tracking. So here you can switch to selfie mode. Face tracking, as you can see. Oh, well, it's just tracking my face. Body tracking, which is works better because it seems to put me more proportionally in the image. With the face tracking, it doesn't do that quite so well. So as you can see, if I stand up, look at this way. It does that really quite well. And you'll notice in this selfie mode, as mentioned before, we can do the 4K recording, which quite a few apps don't actually do, so I'm quite pleased with that. Well, as you can see, I was quite impressed with these gimbals. They're very similar. They're slightly different in size. They have a couple of different functions added to the X Pro version, and they both have the option of coming with this light, which is pretty useful. If you're going to be doing some filming indoors, then that could be a handy addition. They don't charge much extra to add this light in, so it might be worth having anyway. And I think the build quality and the usability, the smoothness of the controls of these were really quite impressive. So I think it's a really good solution at a really good price. So I hope you found that useful, you learnt more and it's helped you make a better buying decision. So please, if you want to know more about gimbals, there's a playlist over here. And if you want to know more about what's going on on the channel, please subscribe by clicking the link up here and I look forward to seeing you over there.